Okay, hi there, it's Nick Dutch again, talking about my, you know, my, my next stage in this uh, mini-series, so to speak, on getting yourself or getting into the New Age movements and some of the pitfalls and problems and benefits and all the rest of that kind of weird stuff. And I'm not going to be able to go into the whole thing. It's a very, very big, complex subject, and all I'm going to have to do is tell you what I think, all right? So it's relatively condensed, uh, but never mind, here it goes. One criticism of New Age thinking is the fact that New Age ideas are, in reality, primitive religious ideas, and that's not necessarily a good thing, okay? Uh, big no-no. The biggest influence upon the New Age movement was probably not occultism. It wasn't spiritualism. It was not witchcraft, all right? It was not paganism, all right? What it was, was the schools of thought of psychology, psychoanalysis, and counseling. How many times have you heard the phrase or the words in a child being used by someone who's vaguely new agey and weird? Uh, probably rather a lot. Now, the progress that an individual, a human individual, goes through uh, in life has been documented by, you know, psychoanalysts, by the counselors, and all the rest of that. We've got quite a complex uh, number of schools of thought which deal with the psychosexual stages of personal development, and also the cognitive stages, uh, Jean Piaget, and all the rest of that, that the, uh, that the child goes through, okay? So Freud, Piaget, Jung, these are like the key thinkers uh, for the, the, the New Age world, the way it's uh, appeared and came about. I don't think it's any real... Um, you know, coincidence that the witchcraft religion started in the 1950s after all of the psychological research which was done in the early part of the 20th century and also the important work of Freud et al. That's because the time had finally come for a society or, or ideas within the society that could be driven by this kind of wisdom. And this is why I see a strong connection between the New Age world and transdeism. And therefore, you know, there is a bit of a discussion amongst a few people out there as to whether Nick Dutch is in fact a New Age or whether he's in fact a deist or a deist or a transdeist or whatever it is that people think I am at various different times because, like, no one can actually fully get a proper handle as to where I am or what I'm coming from because basically I'm a human being who's learned how to think rather than necessarily some uh, imbecile who's learned that believing can be fun, okay? So it's a different perspective as to where I'm coming from. So within the New Age world, what is it that people actually do? They do exercises called path working exercises. These like imaginative inner journeys in which people encounter things. All right? So the journey itself can be based upon something from mythology or a religion or something along those lines. A person would sit comfortably in a meditative position, often the Egyptian meditative position as it's sometimes called, which basically means sitting upright in a chair with your hands on your legs, basically. Hands pointed slightly inwards. You know, spine nice and straight and relaxed and breathing. Why? Because it's dead easy for us in the Western world to spend a lot of our time sitting on chairs rather than sitting on like little meditation stools or eating bowls of rice or whatever it is people do in the Orient. You know what I mean? All right, so that's probably why we, you know, we use the Egyptian meditation position, and it's probably called the Egyptian meditation position, not because it looks like some of the images of people seated on thrones in, like, you know, the, you know, all the various ancient hieroglyphics, or the, you know, priests and kings and gods sort of sitting in that particular posture, but because the word Egyptian is sexy. All right, that's that's basically what it's about. All right, the word Egyptian is sexy because there was a time when some big you know, weirdos decided that, you know, everything should be connected with Egypt, or everything should be connected with the Celtic lot, and so on and so forth. So, they used the word Egyptian to mean the meditation position. In the meditative journey, there's always a beginning, a middle, and an end, okay? And during the beginning, uh, you, like, instigate a trance to a certain variety of meditation, often a milky white mist around you, and at the end of it, you close it, Okay? during the meditation, that that's where things get interesting, because you can come across things which are from basically from inside yourself through the visualization exercise, and that's why self-training is important. Now, from a psychoanalytical perspective, if you were to literally sort of like visualize yourself descending, 
you may possibly encounter something like uh, an inner child's type of experience there, dealing with like adolescent rage or uh, or maybe a desire to be cuddled and looked after. And from that, if you were to have done enough reading, okay, and education, proper education, you may be able to start working out what that could actually mean as far as just, you know, your own personal growth and development is concerned. Whether you've still got in some aspects of your personality blocked up within a inner child's like state or you know whether you're still dealing with resentment and bitterness or whether you're still dealing with issues relating to abandonment or so on and so forth all right it's there as part of uh, part of your own psychotherapy and likewise when you were to, were to go upwards you may come across uh, like a super ego type um, entity or experience which can either be the punishing parent who turns around to you and says don't be stupid all right or it could be the all-loving type parent experience in which, you know, you get the feeling of, like, being wrapped in the arms of some kind of, like, divine being. Uh, and these can happen just through visualizing yourself either ascending or descending. And also doing other forms of color visualization as well, and visualization of symbols can have uh, a similar effect. And so, predominantly from a Freudian union uh, and also even from a, from a cognitivist perspective, you will be exploring different aspects of your own mind. That's essentially where the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest real issue or the biggest, you know, biggest cause in the New Age world really is. All right. It's psychology, it's counseling, it's psychoanalysis, basically. But when people start to have more strange experiences, and yes, they do come along, you know, I've, I've had a fair few of them myself, okay. That's when people stop being able to understand that they still need the objectivity and rationality of someone who's going through a therapeutic process rather than going through uh, a factual scientific experiment. And because of the misinterpretations that's happened, because of the misuse of the Crowdian term, magic being science and art of change and conformity with the will, and so on and so forth, uh, everything gets a bit confused and people stop being able to think properly and for themselves. All right? That's what's happened. So the New Age world is now in... Uh, a psychological clusterfuck, basically, if you forgive the French, based upon misinterpretations, misrepresentations, and moving away from what it could actually be used for, namely therapy, helping people to become better um, integrated into society, helping people to deal with issues relating to their childhood and their adolescence and early adulthood, uh, and basically helping human beings to move further forward. Uh, now, there was one of those books on high magic I read a long time ago that defined magic as being the yoga of the West, because basically all it was was a meditative experience which was designed to help do you some good and therefore to assist you in the progress of your life. But too many people have moved away from that and moved towards spiritual literalism and instead of thinking like, I'm doing this to do myself some good. What they're thinking is, I'm doing this so I can control the forces of the universe and they will do my bidding and I can kill all kinds of people by it, Lord, yes. Um, which is, of course, somewhat mental, slightly megnomaniacal, if that's the right word, uh, and basically, as some other people would say, batshit crazy. Hmm. Curious phrase, I rather like it, never mind. But I think you can see where I'm coming from. This is why the New Age movement needs to be put back on track so we can start doing people some good rather than doing people some harm. 